Learning to kiteboard is mostly about kite control and less about the board. During lessons, it is very common to see students completely misunderstand what controls a kite. This guide explains the principles of controlling a kite surf kite to help you get the most out of your lessons. First, let's look what steers a kite. A kite is steered by applying small amounts of tension to either the left steering line or right steering line. To apply tension to a steering line, you simply bring it in towards you, pulling away from the kite. Tension in the left steering line steers left. Tension in the right steering line steers right. You don't need to apply much tension and you don't need to apply that tension for long to get the kite to steer. The amount of tension you apply and how long you apply it for are critical. If you don't apply enough tension, the kite won't respond. If you apply too much tension or apply that tension for too long, the kite will over respond. Then when the kite turns more quickly, it becomes much more powerful and more dangerous. Please note that although these shots are taken on land for clarity, for a beginner, flying a kite on land can lead to injury or even death. A skilled instructor, however, will keep you completely safe as you learn to control a kite. They'll make sure you're using equipment suitable for your skill level that's not powerful enough to cause injury, and they will conduct lessons in a safe location, such as knee to waist deep water, which adds another layer of safety. To understand more about kite control, we need to keep in mind wind direction and the basics of the wind window. The kite handles differently depending on its position relative to the wind. In this example, the wind is blowing the same way that the camera is pointing. The direction the wind travels is called downwind. The direction the wind approaches from is called upwind. A kite flies on your downwind side. A kite does not fly on your upwind side. Between your downwind side and your upwind side, you have crosswind. This is the line perpendicular to the wind. Directly downwind, we have the high power zone. This is where a kite flies fast and pulls hard. Further from downwind and nearer to crosswind is the low power zone where the kite flies more slowly and pulls gently. Firmer steering or oversteering can easily aim a kite into the high power zone. Gentle steering generally keeps the kite in the low power zone, flying in a wide arc that avoids directly downwind. That's why you begin lessons working on your slow piloting of the kite. The kite can fly to the left of the wind or to the right. We use clock numbers to describe the angle of the kite. On the left of the wind, we have nine, then 10, then 11 o'clock. In the middle we have 12 o'clock. At this position, the kite is almost overhead, just a few meters downwind. On the right we have one, then two, then three o'clock. What you're seeing here is the building blocks of something known as the wind window that was explained in the previous video. How a kite handles changes depending on where it's flown in the wind window. If you get the kite to sit at 12, it can hold position for quite a while. If the kite drifts right, you can apply tension to the left line to get it to steer back to 12. If the kite drifts left a bit, you can apply tension to the right line to get it to steer back to 12. The kite does not hold position for long, however, when it moves to the side. 
If a kite moves left of 12, its weight will then pull it down to the left. Or, if a kite moves right of 12, its weight will then pull it down to the right. So, a kite will not stay still for long when it's at your side. To get the kite to hold still or park, you need to apply some steering tension. If the kite is held on the left of 12, with its weight pulling left, you need to apply the correct amount of tension to the right steering line to make it hold position. If you apply more tension than that, the kite will climb. If you apply less tension, then the kite will drop. So you can park a kite or move a kite up and down simply by adjusting the tension in the upper steering line, in this case, the right line. Let's steer the kite over to the right hand side of the window now. It helps to use a few small steering inputs. That way the kite moves slowly from one position to another. That stops the kite moving too quickly and getting out of control. With the kite now moving onto the right hand side of the window, if you apply the correct amount of tension to the left steering line, the kite can hold position. If you apply less tension to the upper steering line, the kite will drop. If you apply more tension to the upper steering line, the kite will climb. During lessons you must learn to park the kite reliably at 10.30 or park the kite reliably at 1.30 using just a fraction of your concentration. That's because it won't be long until you're body dragging and then you'll need to park the kite while focusing on your body position and even while getting the occasional wave over your head. There are many ways to apply or remove steering tension. You can use two hands. To steer left, you must achieve more tension in the left line than the right. You may need to push out the right to avoid applying tension to the right line. To steer right, you must achieve more tension in the right steering line than the left. You may need to push out with the left to avoid applying tension to the left line by mistake. You can also control the kite with one hand, and you can do so from different parts of the bar. You can control from nearer the end of the bar. This requires the least force, and it's the best way to feel how much tension is really required. If you pull hard, however, the kite will turn rapidly and its power may get out of control. You can also control a kite with a single hand placed nearer the center of the bar. When your hand is nearer the center of the bar, you need to twist the bar in order to steer. To steer left, you must twist the bar so that the left side of the bar moves in and the right side of the bar moves out. Or, to steer right, you must twist the bar to move the right side of the bar in and the left side of the bar out. If you merely bring in the center of the bar without twisting, you will tension both steering lines and not steer. Hopefully now you know what steers a kite, you can avoid these common mistakes. Many students instinctively try rotating the bar around the axis of the center lines, like a car steering wheel. Hopefully you can see this motion does not bring steering lines in or out. Some students also try dragging the whole bar to the side. Again, this does not bring the steering lines in or out effectively. Another very common issue is that students apply tension to both steering lines by mistake. For example, they try to steer left, but they're also tensioning the right steering line without noticing. The kite then fails to steer left. Or, for example, they try to steer right, but they're also tensioning the left steering line without noticing. The kite then fails to steer right. This can easily happen because there's an erroneous instinct that you should be gripping the bar quite firmly to retain control of a kite. Try not to tense up like this. Instead, keep your arms out and relaxed and use a light grip. 
Critically, that will help you avoid oversteering of the kite. And importantly, that also means that you'll start to feel the tension you're applying to the steering lines. And to progress much further as a kite surfer, you will need to be able to fly the kite by feeling. In part two, we delve deeper into the basics of controlling a kite surf kite. <laughs>